chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again we shall now learn the various methods of solving quadratic equations i shall cover different methods in the coming video lectures but today i'll be discussing the direct or shortcut method for solving a quadratic equation before i take up this direct and shortcut method i want to tell you about the advantages and disadvantages of this method because you should be aware about them the advantage is that if it is applicable to a particular case to a particular situation then it is very fast the results are immediate it is the fastest and best method if it is applicable to a particular situation a particular quadratic equation this is the only big advantage which is very very important secondly the disadvantage is that this method is not applicable to all the cases and many times if a student is not able to apply it correctly then it wastes time and it proves counterproductive had it been the best method then obviously it would have been the only method for solving quadratic equations but there are other methods also that exist because this method will not apply to all the cases so beware of these disadvantages and as i will go i will surely explain the situation where this method should not be applied the situation where this method cannot be applied and in one of my coming video lectures i'll give you a scheme that you should follow so that you do find a solution sure shot so this is this lecture we are taking up an explanation of the direct or shortcut method so that you know this method so that you understand this method but in one of the coming lectures i will explain you a complete scheme a complete story a complete algorithm a complete set of steps that you should follow to solve a quadratic equation so that you are able to get a solution sure shot let us start with the direct and shortcut method today direct method now instead of giving you the steps of this method i want to give you the basis of this method the proof behind this method from where this method came and all the mathematical steps behind this method this proof will help you understand this method deeper although this is not required at all if you want to skip this part you can skip on and there will be after this proof a explanation and exposition of the two steps that are required to apply this method let us try to prove it first many students want a proof and this proof is also recommended see how by understanding these proofs you also get the advantage of getting introduced to the various concepts of algebra they make you a better student of algebra as i have always told you algebra is all about rearrangement this one word 
summarizes the entire concept of algebra. So I will show you how rearrangement can be used to reach at the direct method. Okay, this is the quadratic equation in its most general form, where a, b, c are constants and a is not equal to 0. You are already conversant with this form. So let us now start with this form. If alpha and beta are the roots of this equation, are the roots of this equation, then we have already proved in our last lecture that b by a is equal to alpha plus beta. The sum of the roots is equal to minus b by a. This we have already proved in our previous lecture. Let us now write it in this form. b is equal to, take this a to the other side and minus sign along with it. So you will get minus a alpha plus beta. This is all about smart arrangement. So I am writing it, sorry, this is a beta. Minus a alpha minus a beta are added together. So this is what it is. This is one equation that we can write. Similarly, we have seen that c by a is equal to alpha into beta. The product of the roots is equal to c by a, which can be written as c is equal to a alpha into beta. I have taken a to the other side and this becomes a alpha into beta. Let me bring a for beta also. So I will multiply both sides by a. So this looks like this. a c and a alpha a beta. So I can write it like this also. Minus a alpha minus a beta multiplied minus minus will be ultimately plus. This is all about smart arrangement. This is equation 2. Let me take these equations to the next page. b is equal to minus a alpha plus minus a beta and a c is equal to this. I will take these to the next page. So I have with me b is equal to minus a alpha plus minus a beta and I have c a a c is equal to minus a alpha into minus a beta. This is what I have so far. Now let us suppose that minus a alpha is written as m. Put m is equal to minus a alpha and n is equal to minus a beta. So what I get? I get b is equal to m plus n and a c is equal to m into n. This is what I get. And what is my equation? This means if I can find two numbers whose sum is equal to b and whose product is equal to a c. Suppose I am able to find out two numbers who which can be added to obtain b, which can be multiplied to obtain a c, then alpha will be equal to m by minus a by this. Alpha is m by minus a and beta is equal to n by minus a. So this is the shortcut which I am talking about. So how do you solve a quadratic equation? You have to find out two numbers which can be added to b, which can be multiplied to a c. Then the roots will be m by minus a b and n by minus a. This, this coefficient of x square 
can be divided can divide that number and divide that number and a minus sign is applied so this i will not take up with a practical example suppose i have to solve this quadratic equation x square plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0 now how do i proceed about i will find i will first of all write a is equal to 1 b is equal to 5 and c is equal to 6 we'll write this for our reference now we have to find out two numbers whose product is equal to b so we have to find two numbers which the sum sorry the sum of which is equal to b and the product is equal to c and a ac that is equal to 1 into 6 is equal to 6 is equal to so we have to find out two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is b b is 5 so we have to find out two numbers which will be added to 5 and which will be multiplied to 6 because b is 5 and ac is 6 this is b and this is ac we'll guess out suppose I try thinking then my answer would be 3 and 2, 3 and 2 because 3 into 2 is 6 and 3 plus 2 is 5. This means I have found two numbers whose sum is 5 and whose product is 6. So the root would be 3 by minus this a is 1, 3 by minus 1 comma 2 by minus 1 which implies minus 3 and minus 2 is the solution to this quadratic equation so let me summarize the whole story find out two numbers the sum of which is equal to b and such that the product of the same two numbers should be equal to the product of a and c so first of all you have to search for two numbers which will add to b and the product of the same two numbers should be equal to product of a and c if I am able to find m and n, then the roots would be m divided by minus a and n divided by minus a. This is the algorithm. The same thing I have applied to this case. I saw that x square plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. And I had to hunt for two numbers, the sum of which is equal to b, that is 5, and the product of which is equal to 6. I found the numbers as 3 and 2. And then the roots would be 3 by minus of a, this one, and 2 by minus of a, and I got this answer in a flash second. Let me take up a few more examples because before I discuss the disadvantages once again and explain to you with some practical examples that in those cases you cannot apply this method. Let us take our next example. The next question is solve this quadratic equation plus 5x plus 2 equal to 0. So as my step 1, now I am very clearly writing the steps. The step 1 is find two numbers, two numbers whose sum is, whose sum is equal to 5 because b is equal to 5 and a is and this is c and also whose product is equal to ac equal to 3 into 2 is equal to 6 so these are simple cases so we can simply guess it out that the numbers would be 3 and 2 Step 2, first root alpha is 3 by minus a which is equal to 3 by minus 3 because a is 3 as you can see here. So alpha is minus 1 and the second root beta will be equal to 2 by minus a which is equal to 2 by minus 3 which is equal to minus 2 by 3. So this is the answer and this is the answer. Let us take another example. All these examples they will exhibit something of interest. 
So this is our next example. So in this case A is 1, B is 1 and C is equal to minus 12. So let us go by our step 1. We have to find out two numbers two numbers whose sum b is equal to 1 and whose product is equal to c into a is equal to minus 12 into 1 is equal to minus 12. Now in this case the product is a negative number and the sum is a positive number. So our instant guess is that both the roots have opposite sign. So one is positive and the other is negative. Keep this in mind. And when we have to find the sum as one, that is actually going to be a difference. Because the signs of the two roots are opposite. So I have to find out two numbers whose product is 3 multiplied by 4 and whose sum is minus 1. So I can immediately guess that the two numbers will be 3 and uh, minus 3 and plus 4 because 4 into 3 minus 3 is 12 and 4 plus minus 3 is equal to 1. So in this case the two num roots had opposite signs and therefore the sum was actually going to be a difference. Now in this case we saw that a few complication was there which actually required us to search for a case where the two numbers had opposite signs and it required us to apply a little more brain to this one. But we were lucky enough that as soon as I wrote, I was immediately able to see that 4 and 3 are quite close. So I was able to adjust the sign to 4 and minus 3. But in all cases, you are not going to be that lucky. So this method has those disadvantages. But let us apply to the current case so that at least we solve this one. In step 2, the roots would be 4 is one number, 4 by minus a a is 1 so it is minus 4 and the other is minus 3 divided by minus 1 which is equal to plus 3. Let us practice along another question. This question says solve this quadratic minus x square plus 6x minus 8 equal to 0. So as our step 1 let us isolate a is minus 1 b is 6 and c is minus 8. So in our step 1 what we will find two numbers whose sum is equal to 6 and whose product is equal to minus 8 multiplied by minus 1 equal to plus 8. So I am scratching my brain to find two numbers whose product is 8 and whose sum is 6. In case you find difficulty, you can try this approach. Write 8 as 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. That is factorize out 8. Now you can think of pair or pair out of this. This is not. So we can see from this that if we can keep 2 to one side and join these two, 2 and 4 are going to be those numbers. Out of this we have found two sets of numbers which add to 6 and which multiply of course to 8. This is one technique that you can use although this might not work in all the cases. So this is one of the artifices, one of the methods that you can create a prime factorization of the required product and on the basis of that you can at least find out some combination. So in case things get stuck up, you can make use of this technique. So here I have found 2 and 4 to be two numbers whose sum is 6 and whose product is 8. So obviously in this case, the roots are going to be 2 by minus a 
minus a in this case is plus 1 because a is minus 1 and when it will be minus it will become plus. So likewise the second root will be 4 and 1 which implies 2 and 4 are the roots. Most probably you are thinking of this, you are not clear about this. Let me explain this part with the help of another example. See this. Now I am not writing any quadratic equation. I am writing 1, 2 multiplied by 7. So what is this? This is equal to 14. This means if I have 1, 14, then I will factorize it into 2 multiplied by 7. And what will be the sum? 9. So if somebody says find two numbers whose product is 14 and whose sum is 9, how would I find? I would go for this. I would write 14 as 2 multiplied by 7. And then I will try to combine these and I can easily see that 7 plus 2 is 9. These factors have to be suitably combined. For example, if we multiplied, see this one, if I multiplied it by 1 more 3, then what is this? 42. And what combinations I can find? 7, 2, 14 and another 3. So if I have to find two numbers whose product is 42 and whose sum is 17, then that number can be found out by suitably combining these factors into two parts. 7 and 2 are combined as 14 and 3 is left so it will make 14 plus 3 17. Take another similar example. Find two numbers whose product is 60 and sum is 16. So what I will do is I will factorize this one. I will write it as 2 into 3 into 5 into 2. So this is what it is going to be 2 into 2, 4, 3, 12, 5, 60. Now I have to find out two pairs, two combinations. If it is possible to find two combinations of 2, 2, 3 and 5 splitting these into two parts so that they add to 16. So I have to split it in such a way. Let me see how I can do it. I can see that if I combine this 2 with this 3, I will get 6 and if I combine this 2 with 5, then I will get 10. Then 10 and 6 added will give me 16. So 6 and 10 are those numbers. I am basically uh, partitioning these 4 numbers into 2 parts such that the sum of their products is eventually the sum 16. If you haven't still understood, take another example. Supposing we have to solve this quadratic equation x square plus 41x plus 210 equal to 0. Now this is a very awkward quadratic equation. We have to find two numbers whose sum is equal to 41 and product is equal to 200. 10. This is what we can see. C into A, 210 itself and this is B. For this we will split this, the product one. We were doing the same here also. So 210 can be factorized as 2 into 3 into 5 into 7. We will create prime factors out of 210. We can easily see that 2 into 3, 6 into 5, 30 into 7. 210. Now we have to partition these into two parts and the sum of the products of those parts should be equal to 41. So we can see that this is one partition and this is second partition. So 3 into 2 will be 6, 7 into 5 will be 35 and their sum will become 41. So we can see that if we partition them like this, then the sum of the individual parts will be 41. Of course, I am sure you are now thinking that the success of this method entirely depends on your ability to isolate it. You have absolutely seen the right thing. 
that if you are able to successfully make this split then you are successful if you can't make this split then your whole effort is not going to yield anything so obviously the solution in this case will be 6 by minus 1 minus a and it will be 35 by minus a minus 6 and minus 35 is the solution to this quadratic equation so let us see whether you can solve my second question another question on this on the same pattern you have to do this 5x square plus 27x plus 36 equal to 0 so try to solve it yourself and if you have done come back we have to find out two numbers whose product is 5 multiplied by 36 and whose sum is 27 don't multiply it because we'll ultimately have to split it only so we will write it as 5 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 so this is what is the prime factorization of 5 multiplied by 36 I haven't multiplied it because ultimately I was going to factorize it so I have orally factorized 36 which is 3 into 2 into 2 into 3 now we have to partition these five numbers into two parts obviously we can draw a line here it will give me 15 for this and 12 for this 2 to 4 and 3 12 so this is 27 ultimately so my two numbers will be 15 and 12 which multiplied will give me 5 by 36 and which when added will give me 27 so what is the solution it is 15 by minus a which ultimately becomes minus 3 and what about the other one it is going to be 12 by same minus 5 here minus 12 by 5 so this is one and this is another so it ultimately boils down to how successful you are at finding this combination or at partitioning the prime factorization if you are lucky sharp then you can do it but in case you have some some problem with this then it will ultimately be a time waster so lot of practice is required let us move on to our next question our next question is 49 x square plus 55 x plus no uh, take it like this this is 21 x square plus 88 x plus 55 equal to 0 suppose this is the question in this case we have to find out two numbers whose product is whose product is this multiplied by this that is 21 multiplied by 55 I will not complete this product because I have to factorize it ultimately and sum is what sum is given as 88 which is same as B now I will factorize this one this will be 3 multiplied by 7 and this one will be 5 multiplied by 11 now I have to split this into two parts maybe one number on one side and three on the other or two on one side and two on the other so that is my luck how fast I can find out the pair combinations whose sum is 88 so let us start by trying three on one side and the remaining three on the other side that is 35 multiplied by 11 now this is going to be a huge number so when you add 3 it will not never come close to 88 so after making some trials we can easily see that we will have to partition them in such a way that 3 and 11 come together that is 3 and 11 come in one compartment and 7 and 5 come in the second compartment this will be 33 and this will be 35 so after a few guesses you can arrive at this pair this pair will obviously multiply to 21 by 55 
because it has been derived from this one only. 3 into 11, 33 into 7 into 5, the same thing. But their sum is 88. Take some time to understand this method. So, in this case, our hunt for numbers is 33 and 35. And obviously, the solution will be 33 by minus a, which is minus 21, which condenses to, this goes by 3, minus 11 by 7, and likewise 35 by minus 21. This will simplify to 5, 7, and uh, sorry, uh, this uh, will be 7, 7, 5, minus 5 by 3. So, this is what is one answer, this is the second answer. You must have realized that if you are able to find out these two numbers, then the answer comes in a split second. So, it's all about practice. So, before I close, let me take a last example to see how we can solve the quadratic equations by the direct shortcut method. This is this question, 3x square minus 2 square root of 6 into x plus 2 equal to 0. Can you try to solve this? So, if we solve it, the method would be product of two numbers, product of two numbers has to be, has to be 2 into 3 which is equal to 6, this 2 a and c and sum of those two numbers has to be minus 2 square root of 6. In this case, prime factorization is not possible. So, what we can see is that our intuitiveness says that one number is minus square root of 6, the other number is square root of 6 minus square root of 6. If you multiply them, then minus and minus 1 will, will become plus and square root of 6 into square root of 6 will leave 6. So, their product will be 6 and when I add them, minus square root of 6 added to minus square root of 6 will ultimately lead me to minus 2 square root of 6. So, my jackpot is this that my two numbers are going to be minus square root of 6 and minus square root of 6. If I have hunted them, the solution is not very far away. So, what is going to be my solution? It is going to be minus square root of 6 divided by minus of a which is 3. So, I will see that minus and minus cancel out. I can write it as square root of 6 by 3 which can be further written as square root of 2 into square root of 3 by 3. So, you can see I split square root of 6 and this square root of 3 can be adjusted with this 3. So, it will become square root of 2 by square root of 3, which is ultimately equal to square root of 2 by 3. And since both these numbers are identical, the roots will also be identical. So, we can obviously see that both the roots are square root of 2 by 3 and square root of 2 by 3. I repeat once again, the success of this method is solely dependent on your ability to find out two numbers quickly and as early as possible. And once you are lucky enough to hit the jackpot, your answer isn't even a one second away. We'll close it right now. In our next lecture, we'll proceed to develop the solution method of quadratic equations even further. Thank you.